Well, the housing market, first of all, is uh, doing great. Uh, the good news is the government policies about mortgages and uh, restructuring the financial system have been pretty successful. Uh, the other big news there, though, is there's house prices are going up nicely maybe too nicely because there's a shortage of production of new homes. I don't know how much you've covered that, yep. but uh, we've never returned to a normal level of production of about 1.5, 1.6 million units a year. That's, and you don't think we're on track to, to begin? It's stalled at about 1.3, 1.4 for several years now. That's providing a lot of pressure underneath to keep house prices and rents going up at a level some people think is a little too high. Okay. It makes credit great for us, but it's probably not good long-run policy. Okay, so explain this, though. Freddie has now transferred a portion of the mortgage right. credit risk on $1 trillion yep. of the single-family mortgages from taxpayers to private investors. Yep. How's that happened? Okay. First of all, that is probably the biggest reform we've done. Um, the Achilles heel of the GSEs and a lot of the mortgage specialty firms like home loan banks or the thrifts, over-concentration in mortgage assets. We're required to. Right. public policy outlets uh, and such. I came from the regular banking system and this kind of concentration risk is poorly regarded, not well regarded. So uh, we undertook a program of, of uh, issuing a new type of bond that literally takes our, the credit losses for us and we get reimbursed from investors. It was a kind of test starting about 2013. We invented the first one or two structures and it's taken off. So the $1 trillion is mortgages that have some risk laid off to investors. We have worked with the, our regulator, the Federal Housing Finance Agency, on a more uh, quantitative way to measure how much risk is being laid off. And the capital, about 60% of the capital we would need to keep for credit risk on new mortgages, single family mortgages, is right. being laid off. How badly do you want to get out of conservatorship? Um, on a personal level. As, 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 as the leader of this company? Uh, the answer is uh, I took the job knowing it was in conservatorship and knowing it w I'd be done while it was still in conservatorship. So you don't think under the Trump administration uh, anytime soon that there's a chance to, to okay. fix this? That's slightly different. Just for the record, I was a retired old banker. Yep. And it's not going to be in my time to, do, to come out. I, I did this job as public service. I knew it was conservatorship. I knew... There was no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I already had my pot of gold before. So um, the, I'll tell you the conventional wisdom in Washington is that a legislative solution is not near, in the near term. That's, everyone says it, even the relevant senators and congressmen, it's not going to happen in the near term. The new thing in the last year is the quiet alternative, what's called administrative reform, is being talked about a lot including by several elected officials, and that's sort of the up-and-coming thing where people right. are focusing that that could Eric, happen. Eric, what do you think is realistic? And by the way, are you a believer that shareholders and bondholders and all this got ripped off? Well, first of all, I have to just disclose that we are uh, representing yeah. interested stakeholders yes. in all this, but let me just, uh, at Mollis and Company, but let me just step back a second, just talk just generally. I mean, when I was leader, we had... Um, so much difficulty, um, uh, and Don's right, gaining consensus on the Hill right. in a bipartisan way. Uh, and I do agree entirely that the legislative fix is not in the offing. But we saw yesterday the administration put forward its right. reform of government proposal, and one of those planks in that proposal right. was uh, to, uh, to allow for uh, the GSEs to come out from right. under conservatorship. So right. there's that, that talk of administrative reform right. is very real. The, the challenge, <clears throat> people always wonder why 10 years on, can't you come out, can't you right. fix this problem? Um, there were now very well recognized weaknesses in the GSC system. And uh, so no one, no is bipartisan agreement not to let us out as is. Uh, then it's, well, if we're going to change things, how do we change them? Uh, <clears throat> I'm an observer here. We're told in our, this job we don't have a dog in this fight uh, about how it comes out. We're right at the heart of political philosophy differences of big government, big involvement in the economy, small government, small involvement in the economy. And we come from the big government, big involvement in the economy right. tradition. That's but you don't think it has anything to do with, by the way, the profits that the government has made off of you? Not that I've ever heard anywhere in a meeting. In a meeting? 
but that is but, it, but that is a truth, an underlying truth of what's happened over the last ten years. Uh, well, the, their profits are flowing to the government. How much that affects their policy deliberations? So the, I'm never in the room for that. The, the 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 historic sort of. Um, Difference was always between the two sides about right. the government backstop. Well, philosophy. Was right. it's a government backstop, it's and I think yeah. now even in the administration's proposal yesterday or two days ago, it was very much about uh, sort of almost an acquiescence now that there was going to be some type of government backstop, right. whether or not these entities remain government chartered or not. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.